in today's video we are going to be talking about fonts and clip art and if you are new to selling on teachers pay teachers these are things that you really want to do to spruce up your products not not necessarily for everything you do but um, it, it can make a huge difference and we're also going to be talking about you know I'm going to say it terms of use <laughs> stay tuned hey everyone my name is Lorianne if you are new or returning welcome here to Soul Primary we talk teacher side hustles and before I get going I just want to introduce you to the newest It's All Primary team member. This is Milo, and he has been in this home a little over 24 hours. So he, he's already had his checkup with the vet. And uh, anyways, he is a little ball of energy, and hopefully you will pass that on to me, because I could use it. Anyways, I'll put him back. Let's get into fonts and clip art. So why do you need fonts, extra fonts and clip arts? Because, you know, if, whether you're working on Google Slides, PowerPoint, Word, eh, be careful with Word, unless you're putting it, making it a PDF. But they all come with lots of fonts and they even have their own images and things, right? So why do you need all these extra little things? Depending on the grade and depending on the resource that you're creating, you might not need them. But you are looking for ways to make your products stand out from everybody else. And so making them a little just, you know, pretty as <laughs> I don't know what other word to use. By making them a little bit prettier, uh, you know, you're going to attract more eyes on them. You don't want them overly pretty. In fact, while we're talking about fonts, I would stay away from the script, the handwriting fonts. A lot of buyers, a lot of teachers aren't interested in those fonts. So let's just get into fonts right now while I'm while I'm thinking about that. There are thousands, hundreds, thousands, millions of fonts out there. As I said, you can use what's on Google Slides, on PowerPoint, on Word. You could use them. But if you're looking for something a little bit different or something maybe you want, maybe you're looking for this really cool, bold font for your covers, say, and you're not on Canva, <laughs> watch last week's video on Canva, um, then you can go the way of fonts. And if you follow my journey, I took a course right at the beginning and they gave us some fonts and they gave us some clip art as part of the course, which was really nice. And it got me on that crazy journey of, oh, I, you know, hoard, hoard, hoard. <laughs> but if you're creating most of your products in Google Slides, you cannot add fonts, your own purchase fonts to Google Slides. Now there's ways of getting around that. You can create them as images on something else and then move them over as an image. Uh, and I can, if I have time, I will show that to you. But if you are using PowerPoint or Word, you can add fonts to their already existing long list. And for me personally, as a primary school teacher, a lot of fonts don't, they have the old fashioned A, you know, the A that looks like the mm, mm sort of thing. I didn't want that. I wanted the, you know, the C with the little stick A. <laughs> and I couldn't find a really nice one. Or I found a nice A, but then another letter was weird. And so I had this, I spent a lot of time looking for a suitable alphabet font that I could use, as well as I was looking for printing uh, fonts with actual dotted interline so that I could actually make printing pages for my kids. I don't actually sell, I sell a little bit of that on, on TPT, but I these were these were products that I was making for my own class. And so the place where I went to get fonts was not TPT, but it was a website called Da Fonts, and I'll put it right here. And I'm going to show Da Fonts to you. Everything on there is free for personal use. Let's talk terms of use. The terms of use, when somebody is offering their product, their fonts, their clip art, it's up to them whether they want you to A, acknowledge that, 
B, whether they're going to let you use it for uh, selling your own products, right? There's different things. And so it's really important that you read the terms of use. In Defonce, I'm going to show you the terms of use and I'm going to show you um, KG fonts is what I tend to use, but I'm starting to branch out into other people's fonts. Just again, I don't want to I don't want to keep changing my stuff because I think consistency amongst all your products is really important. But I'm again I'm look, looking for uh, maybe some smaller clip art artists or smaller font artists that don't necessarily get um, a lot of recognition, and maybe they can use a few extra eyes. I'm going to be showing you some clip art artists that have smaller stores than the, the probably the big five on TPT. But I'll go to Defonts. I'm going to install, I'm sorry, I'm going to download a font and then I'm going to show you how I add it to PowerPoint. You can also, if you have the pro version of Canva, you can upload all your favorite fonts on Canva as well, which is another cool feature. This is dafont.com. I think I said dafonts earlier, but dafont. They will give you a little bit of a category, what type of fonts you're looking for. They'll give you alphabetical, if you're searching for a particular one, whether that be the uh, name of the font or the artist. So as you can see here, 67,389 fonts. As I mentioned, I use KG fonts. So I'm just going to go to the letter K and there'll be probably plenty here, 90 pages of it. And again, as you can see, just looking at them, they're, they're all over the map as far as styles. KG fonts. Kimberly, I believe is her first name. So she's got 174 fonts on here. I think, I believe most of them are on Teachers Pay Teachers, but depending on, again, style that you're looking for, I use uh, Red Hands. I don't use Miss Kindy, but I use one very similar to it. Lego House I use in my boom cards. Melon Heads is a clip art artist on Teachers Pay Teachers, but as you can see. And so as I was mentioning, I was looking for one with a dotted interline to help kids with printing and tracing. So let's just go to this one. All right, so you just, it says over here, uh, free for personal use. And then there's four fonts. So in this zip folder, there will be four of them. So if I click on this, they'll give you a sample. And they are usually TTF files, depending on the lines. You get a couple options. Spacing, no lines. And then there's an example here. And then the note from the author. Okay, so again, free for personal use. For commercial licensing, please see her website. What you would do is you would inst you would download. I'm just going to put it on my desktop for now because I already have it. Now, um, as you can see, it shows up as a zip folder. So you're going to click on the zip folder, and so you got to unzip it. You're going to see zip folders in next week's video. Okay, and now if I go to my files, it should open up, and it does over on my desktop. So let me just click on it. Here are the fonts. So as you can see, this one, this file gives you four. Let me do the one with, I think I already have these ones installed. So let me just do this one. So you double click on it and it might be a little bit different on the PC, but here's what you want. You want this window to open up and you want to install the font. So click install font and you can see all my fonts along here. Okay, and I want it to show up there. Actually, it's already here. If you were using PowerPoint and you would open your PowerPoint at this point, it may not show. So what you need to usually do is restart your computer to have it showing. So if that's, if that, like I said, if you open up PowerPoint, doesn't show, re just restart PowerPoint. And let me just show you PowerPoint for a moment. Here is um, an example of me using uh, a font this is a KG font. This is clip art. I've, I've layered some font on it and I've used a some clip art, um, a stock photo as a background with the iPad, uh, with the keyboard, and then also with the iPad here. So if I go into um, fonts, actually let me highlight this one. And as you can see up here, it says KG. If I go down, 
primary dots is right there, KG primary dots. So I could change that. I have a selection of bolder fonts, simple, easy to read for primary student type fonts. Now, before I get out of fonts and talk about clip art, let me just show you where I purchase a license. Some of the font artists in DaFont will give you a link to their website and you can buy their font, their license there. But KG also offers on TPT. So let me just go to her store. So here is KG fonts and right up at the top under featured items, here is a single license. If you want to buy all her fonts, it's $2.99. I don't need all the fonts. Every time I add a new one, I just buy this again. So I've purchased this about six times. What I would do if you are new to wanting to get a font, download their freebies. Okay. It doesn't mean that they're free to use if you're going to sell a product, but it um, gives you an idea. It gives you an opportunity to play with a font. I like these font catalogs that many of the um, font artists will do, just so you can see some of them all together. APL is another one I use. There are lots. If you have one that you really enjoy, feel free to uh, post it down below. As I said, this is another one. And Molly, Molly Monroe, who actually made my logo, Golly Miss Molly. She does fonts and she also does uh, logos. So she's done the logo for It's a Primary. So I have a couple of hers as well. Okay, let's talk clip art. Now, clip art comes in all shapes and sizes and colors and real and animated. It is all over the map. And again, clip art are these little things that you can do to, to amp up or, or glamify your products just to make them a little bit fun for kids so that they're not just this wall of, you know, this page of numbers and words words you know something in the corner you can do backgrounds you can do frames you can do uh, real images uh, animated images there's it the list is endless the trend right now is real photography and that may or may not work for the products that you are creating but you can use uh, real photography or mock-ups on your covers so that a a potential buyer can see your image in action. So for example, when I'm um, doing a cover for something that is a, a digital product, whether it be Google Slides or Boom Cards, I almost always put it in a in a iPad mock-up or a photo and then put it on put a screenshot of it on there. Lay it, you know, layer it because I want them to see this is how it's used. It's it's a digital product. You need a iPad or a you know or a computer or something, you know, something digital in order to use the product, right? Because you do get these people every so often going, "Can I print this off?" Yeah, you might be able to. Yeah, you know, it, it might not look the way you want it to. That's the challenge of digital products. You can make them that way, but it takes a little bit extra work. Boom cards are, are now being printable as well. But anyways, that's another story. So on TPT, there are probably five really big clip art artists, and then there's a lot of others. If you follow other TPT YouTubers, um, Eldrina from Tilazo Clip Art is actually a clip art artist, and I'm gonna quickly show you her store. And I'm gonna also show you Jermaine, from Awkward Art, the Awkward Artist, I think it is. And if you are a clip art artist yourself and you would like just, you know, maybe people to check you out, I'm gonna offer the comments down below if you wanna put your name and your TPT store for people to check you out. As I said, clip art that is trending right now are stock photos, mock-ups. And so if you are a clip art artist watching this, um, that might be something you wanna consider. Something I personally look for are math manipulatives. Real photos, not cart, you know, your drawn photos, drawn images as well. I know on the on the Awkward Artists, they have some great music 
um, clip art. So if you're a music person, uh, you want to check them out. There are so many, so many ways that you can add clip art. If you're doing older, middle school, higher, high school, adult ed type products, you might you might want something small. You might want to do something as far as borders or things like that. But don't spend too much time looking at clip art. I have spent hours and I've had to keep cutting myself off because it's like stop doing this. And uh, the other thing is I often wait list stuff and wait for sales. So at the time of this recording, a back to school sale will be coming in less than a month in August and I, I go through my wish list and buy then uh, what I want at 25% off. Okay, we are in Teachers Pay Teachers, and if I just type the word clip art, we are going to get over 660,000 results. <laughs> and as you can see, uh, some of the big ones are pretty much taking over the front page. So it's really important that when you are planning your product, you know exactly what kind of clip art you want. If I was to say, um, back to school. Hopefully back to school would show up, but I'm still looking at 120,000 results. And as you can see, there's a lot of back to school. So be very specific on the clip art you want, or you're going to be spending hours and you don't want to do that. I just finished doing a treasure, like a pirate theme. So if I did pirates, 2,500 is a little bit easier to, <laughs> to look through. I'm not, and I'm not going to do that. I usually glance at the first two, three, four pages, again, just to see what people are offering. When you are looking at somebody's clip art, check if they have their terms of use somewhere on here. So it says here, click here for terms of use. And she's got a terms of use guide here that you can download for free, which I have downloaded actually a couple times because I keep losing it. But gives you a list of what you can and what you cannot um, use the clip art for and that's important so don't buy until you know exactly what you need and that you can use it for various things okay and many of these clip art artists also offer extended licenses again they'll cost more but if that's if you want to use their clip art that's their terms there are clip art artists that don't want you to even acknowledge them. Most of the time they just want an acknowledgement when you buy their uh, clip art and so you should have a a acknowledgements page always with your products that you are selling. I usually have a credits close to my own terms of use. Okay let's go to T. Lazo. I wanted to show you Adrena's. Hold on I got a cat climbing my leg. <laughs> This little guy is just energy. He just runs and he's quiet, it's scary. I can't always see him. I've shut doors with him on the other side. Okay, so this is Adrena's. You can sort products by most recent. So she's been doing some boho, looks great. You can do bestsellers. You know. So say you're looking for some uh, bohemian clip art. All right, so hopefully they will have thumbnails and a preview for you to look at. And there's her terms of use. Okay, and she's saying right here, clip art can be used for both personal and commercial use. And she would like a link back. And usually what I do is I take their logo and I put it on my uh, page. And I'll show you in just a moment that. Okay, so that's Tilazo. And then I want to show you the awkward artist the awkward artist and if you are a music teacher and you're looking for some music okay so she's got treble clefs bass clefs sharps flats naturals so if you need any of these things and they're all done in a really nice watercolor she would be a clip art artist to check out if you are looking for stock photos so backgrounds for your products just type in stock photo and depending on what it is you're looking for at the time of this, Art and Picks has $2 sale on everything. It's kind of crazy. Uh, but if I go here, get off the keyboard, <laughs> she will sell real photos. 
Oops, I was gonna get it mixed up. Okay, so school supplies back to if you're doing a back to school product and you want real supplies, that's something to consider. Teachers Pay Teachers is not the only place to find uh, commercial clip art. I mean, one of the things I didn't do here, let me go back to um, back to school clip art, and then I'm going to change the price to free. Maybe you've got limited dollars. There are places to get free stuff right here on Teachers Pay Teachers. The other places I go, and I'm going to put links down below, is I go to a place called Unsplash. So I just, I've used these for my blog. Uh, sometimes I use them on the back of a, a general post about stuff. But Unsplash is one place I go. And again, you can just type in uh, your search. If I typed in math, like I said, you could use some of these as a background. Another place I'll go is Pixabay. They got beautiful stuff here too. I've used, um, I've used these for my, again, blog. So if I put in math here. And these are free, except they want just acknowledgement. So as you can see here, all math photos for download, all photos are free, all pictures are free to use. So you can use these as backgrounds as well. And all you would do is they usually want you to set up an account. You can create an account using Google. If you have a Gmail account, let's say I wanted this one, right? So I click on it and just download. And again here, free for commercial use, no attribution required. So this particular one, you don't have to credit Pixabay or the artist, right? So this is the artist here, but sometimes they will ask for attribution. Uh, so then you would, okay? So that, that's another one. Canva has a ton of images. Again, even using their free one, I talked about this last week, I go on here a lot to use backgrounds. I like to use the Instagram square. Whoops, that's a story. But Instagram has templates, elements. Again, you have to be very careful. No, I wouldn't put them in. Someone asked me last week about use. You can use them. Um, when I emailed Canva and asked, it did not sound like I, you could based on their comment. Okay. But they've got lots of different uh, templates, backgrounds, you can do colors, pictures. I use, I, you know, sometimes I just find one that says office, you know, something like this, right? You can just change things up or something like that. I like this picture better than these, so I would, I can make this bigger, right? So that's Canva. And again, Canva, you can get a free account and get access to thousands of images for yourself. If you are looking for individual clip art and you, and you want to find something different from Teachers Pay Teachers, you can go to Etsy. And if I did um, a math clip art, I can find things here that will be a little bit different than what you see on Teachers Pay Teachers, though some Teachers Pay Teachers are selling their stuff on Etsy. Another place I would go to is Creative Market. Whoops. Okay, so for here, if I go um, math clip art, I'll find lots as well. And again, this, this stuff will look a little bit different than what you see on Teachers Pay Teachers. So if you're looking, again, something different, some of them will be free, some of them will cost. All right, this one's cute. And as you can see here, licenses, personal use $6, commercial 18 And then you've got to check about what's the difference between a commercial and an extended commercial, right? So you've got to find those out. But you can find free ones here as well. Now let me go back to my PowerPoint. So as you can see, I've used a background image here. This one was from Unsplash, I believe. And then I did, I got this free iPad clip art from 3AM Teacher on Teachers Pay Teachers. This is from EduClips, but I put a font over top. Right, this is from Educlips as well. I put my logo on it. So I'm using a lot of different clip art. This is a screenshot. And it's just a matter of going, so say I want to add, maybe I want to change this. In If you have PowerPoint, and this is a feature I love, if I want to change this to say a boy, I can click on the clip art, right click it, and change picture, 
from a file. Go to my clip art. So here's another one. So I just clip on, I'll click on this one and insert. And now I've got that one and I just move my little font over and straighten it up a bit. Can make that bigger too. Okay, very easy to use. So just organize your clip art in a way that you're going to remember where things are. <laughs> oh, you can always use the search. Credits and thank yous. Have a credit page. It doesn't even have to be a full page. As you can see on this particular product I did for my uh, product creation checklist, it's just because it wasn't very many clip art and fonts I was using, they go right there. And then what I do is I again use their logo and I will actually create a hyperlink to these except for this one here. This one's optional. Canva doesn't need attribution, but I like to give it to them anyways because I use it so much. But each of these is a link to their TPT, TPT store, if it's a TPT store. Put that somewhere close to your terms of use. And sometimes I can fit it at the bottom. If I use a lot of clip art, I do give them their full page, a full page. You can, you can see how it's easy to spend <laughs> hours Put, put a timer on or something or make your phone ding or whatever. Tell Alexa, ask Alexa to stop, <laughs> to say stop what you're doing or something. I think the biggest thing, challenge for me when it comes to fonts and clip arts are the organization of it, especially the clip art. Because I started, I've done a few different organization uh, files for them and, you know, they, they, then I then I rush one time and I get something out of whack and so my my personal clip art uh, organization is a mess but it's one of these projects I plan to do during the summer so there you go anyways upcoming video next week's video is actually going to be on uploading to TPT and um, I've done other videos on this but one of the things I'm going to be doing is showing you how to upload multiple files into for one product and that's been a highly requested <laughs> um, tutorial so I'm going to be doing that I'm going to show you how to uh, create uh, you can I'm going to show you drive though I don't use it I'll be honest right I'll, I'll, sh I'll say this again in that video I don't use drive I'm not comfortable I don't like sometimes apps that say they have access to everything they can delete anything they want. I don't like that. I really don't. I wish they would change that or or give you options, right? Not have to agree to everything. Anyways, that's a, another story. But next week's video is just going to be on uploading. How do you upload different types of files? Okay, and, and they don't accept always different types of files, but there's a way around different types of files and how to get them all uploaded, okay? So wherever you are in the world, I hope you and your family are staying safe being healthy and we'll catch you in that video canva if you are not using canva to create your covers you're missing out super fast easy to use <laughs> or that playlist see ya